Rachi has been unconscious all day. His condition is very grave. News of his illness has brought out his most devoted fans. They continue to keep what amounts to a vigil outside his elaborate Palm Springs home. Yes, when we heard he was ill, we were quite, we felt quite bad about it. Dozens of fans and a small army of reporters and photographers continue to wait outside Liberace's Palm Springs home for the latest word. Anna Kay is one of the many fans here who has been truly touched by the entertainer. He's my inspiration. He, uh, thinking about him, I learned how to play piano. Liberace's attorney, Joel Strote, said the pianist is surrounded by close family members and friends. He told reporters today he was concerned about the circus-like atmosphere developing outside the house. But he did have a message for Liberace's fans. It is his wish that his fans remember him uh, in his glory, which has a, was as a great entertainer, the greatest showman on earth. Now some of those devoted fans have been outside his home for days now. It seems likely that they'll stay there. They simply, they tell us they simply want to be close to Liberace. Welcome back, everyone. Today is February 3rd, 2024. Directly behind me on the corner of Alejo and Bellardo Street in Palm Springs, we are at the former house of Liberace. That's right. 37 years, almost to the date. Actually, tomorrow would be the anniversary. February 4th, 1987 was the day that Liberace passed away from here. And all the people were, I'll show you behind, waiting along this wall. From the clip I just showed you, you can kind of see how it was. But this wall was in here. This was the entrance to the house. So we're gonna go walk around, show a few clips real quick, and then I'll let Liberace show you the inside of the place. Check it out. So here we have the wall, and this is the wall where everybody would be standing when they were coming to pay their respects and just be outside. And this is Liberace's house. This is his second house that he really moved to. I'm, I think he had a couple other properties out here too, but he had the other one that he used to live on uh, that was just actually right down the street. But this is the house that he did pass away in from pneumonia and complications. And that was back in 1987, like I was saying. The other one was on Kawea. That's the, the White House that's actually still looks the same to this day. That's the most like Liberace looking house. Now this house right here was known as the Cloisters. It was a motel. It was four separate properties. We'll go walk around real quick. And then we'll head over to the church over there. That church prior, I, that's been around since the 1930s, but yeah, we're on Alejo and Bellardo. And as you can see, it's all kind of built up now with the golf course right across the street. But anyways, this was the annex for the nuns. This is where they would stay. Walk down the street right here and take a look over. And it was four separate properties. And after it was the annex in the 1930s and the 1950s, I believe it became a motel. And that was called Cloisters. And then it started falling into disrepair. And Liberace just loved the colonial Spanish style. You'll see this in a minute, uh, that higher level. It's all been redone. Uh, at least this part, this part has new people living in it. Give you a little shot of that. And right here is one of the doors, one of the entrances. So we'll walk down the street a little bit and look at where the uh, nuns This home the originally uh, was a hotel, a small hotel. It had 32 guest rooms and it was crying out to be saved when I found it uh, about four years ago. It had uh, decayed quite noticeably and was going to be torn down and uh, I used to come over here in the evenings and look at the mountains and look at this beautiful structure. I felt that it was worth saving so I bought it and I turned it into a private home. I find it very peaceful and serene and I like to just come out here and sit during the lovely evenings which are very balmy incidentally the climate here in Palm Springs is very mild, and at most times of the year, we have temperatures in the high 70s, the low 80s, even in the wintertime. The Chamber of Commerce insists that the uh, average temperature is 82 degrees. The cloisters 
is faced on one end by the master bedroom and on the other end by the shrine to St. Anthony. This is also a wonderful place to contemplate and find peacefulness. All the artifacts in this room come from churches that are now torn down. I found most of them at various auctions in Europe and around the country. The stained glass window, for example, is from Providence, Rhode Island. And since I live across the street from the Catholic Church, I am visited frequently by members of the church, and the entire house has been blessed by the local bishop. This is the bath, and the sound you hear in the background is the Whirlpool tub. It's a, a marvelous, relaxing, sort of therapeutic kind of bath. You can either use it without the Whirlpool or uh, with the Whirlpool, which I really enjoy. This champagne bubble bath, if you want bubbles. Since the room is uh, completely uh, surrounded by mirrors, you can see reflections wherever you look reflections of the chandelier, the ferns. In fact, they go into infinity. The statue is from Rome, and it's made of white Carrara marble. This is the master bedroom at the Cloisters. Most of the furnishings in this room are French Empire and Louis XV. It has a vaulted ceiling, and uh, the most priceless possession in this room is the Louis XV desk, which was presented to Tsar Nicholas II of Russia and on which the Franco-Russian alliance was signed. Most of the furnishings in this room were acquired through the purchase of a museum in Pensacola, Florida. And the desk is uh, truly priceless, and uh, it is insured for $275,000. As you can see, the dogs have the run of the house. Everybody says you have two beds in your bedroom. Well, one of them's for the dogs, and the other's for me. Okay, so this is another part of the property. So Liberace, Lee, as his friends would call him, purchased all four of these lots, and he had his mother living here as well. And his mother, uh, Frances, lived in a three-bedroom on the property, and there's two swimming pools. I believe there was, if not more, seven to eight bedrooms at one time. Uh, they were all themed too. Well, not all of them, but quite a few of them were themed in Liberace at these extravagant parties out here. Try to get a better view of everything else on the property. This is the house that is known for having Scott Thorson, uh, one of Liberace's live ins with him. If you've ever seen Behind the Candelabra, and there's another tie into that too that we'll go take a look at. We'll make our way around the corner over here on Kawia. Here's another separate angle of part of the property. We'll take a look. It is said that after Lee passed, E Entertainment, the owner of that televis television station, bought it, but never uh, came out here, just paid the taxes on it and, and the upkeep. There's the original service entrance. Wow. Locked gate, of course. And the light and the, even the blinds are outdated, you can tell. But these were uh, houses that he let uh, different people rent out from him or live in. I know one was a Sinatra's ex-piano player used to live in here. And Lee was here year round. See that Donnelly golf course over there? But yeah, Lee was always in the desert. And his other house is pretty cool looking too. That's right on the street. That's the one on Kowea. That's 1441 Kowea. Okay, let's head back to the front. Wanted to give another view of the guest property over here. I don't know what they're doing with this place, but it'd be a shame just to let it go. Head back over here. Yeah, once uh, Johnny Carson found out that Lee was not doing well, you, know, you can see the fireplace up there too, the stonework around it. If you look up that um, appearance on The Tonight Show, you can tell that Johnny knows something's wrong and he just lets Lee 
say what he needs to say and play as long as he wanted to. So, very sad. 37 years ago, almost to the day. Definitely one of the greatest showmen. Look at that right here. There's a, I don't know if you can see right there's a socket. And they still have the chandelier up in the window. Let me try to zoom in for that. If you can see that. But yeah, like I was saying, there was two pools on this property. And it's really sad to say that. The old call box. So many people took advantage of Liberace and his good nature. So, no, this door is locked, but it looks like it's the original door. As you can see through it, it's really been weathered by the hot summers and the rain. Speaking of rain, we're supposed to be getting some soon. So that was cool. Um, I'll probably enter another uh, clip. I believe right around this corner is where another one of the poles were. Of and this is the gazebo. It's at the far end of the property and it's a lovely place to have lunch under the grape arbor. When the grapes are in season, all you have to do is reach up and pick a bunch. And they're very sweet, seedless grapes. These are the director's chairs that I had made up last Christmas. Instead of putting uh, name cards on all the gifts, I had names put on the chairs in front of the gifts for all my guests and friends and family. And then when they took their gifts home, they took their chair with them. In the uh, main dining room of the Cloisters, I call this the William Randolph Hearst room because most of the furnishings in here very closely resemble those in San Simeon, which was the residence of William Randolph Hearst. One afternoon I was visited by William Randolph, her son, and uh, he brought over some photographs of furnishings that he thought I might be interested in that would suit the architecture of this home. And when he showed me the pictures, they were almost identical to the furnishings that you see in this room. So I thanked him and said, I already had them. <laughs> It's a marvelous cabinet. Everyone says, how do you open it? Because there are no handles and you just push it in like that. The glassware is from Czechoslovakia, but actually I bought it at Disney World in Orlando, I Florida. I want to show as much as I can, but this is the front. And Lee supposedly was by the window uh, before slipping into his coma and could hear the fans outside just cheering him on. 37 years ago, I was 9, 10 years old, but yeah, as you could see in the beginning clip, this wall was not here, the privacy wall, so direct access. We're going to walk over to this church real quick, and I mean, this is literally a stone's throw. And we're going to walk over to this church, and there's a, a cool little piece of information that I want to go over that has to deal with uh, Liberace's death. So here we are, and this is the St. Anne Church. It is now Our Lady of Solitude Catholic Church, but this church actually is where, after Liberace passed away just down the street and went to uh, L.A., he was actually brought back here for a small service for just family and friends, his sister, Joe Strode, and about 10 people were the only people that attended this, and they brought Liberace's body back and they had his body in here which is pretty interesting so yeah he had a private service here and right over here is his house so I just stepped inside I want to show this was actually used in the movie of behind the candelabra and this was the scene at the very ending where you see him come in but I'll try to find a clip of that as well but this is where they had Liberace's body in waiting before they returned it back to Forest uh, Lawn up in LA. One more thing I want to show you as they have the benches here. I mean, you have Jackie Coogan and right here, the very last bench, 
Vlad Zhao, Valentino Liberace. May 16th, 1919 to February 14th, 1987. Pretty, pretty impressive. Rest in peace, Liberace. Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, Liberace died with Christ and rose with him to a new life. May he now share with him in eternal glory. Let us pray. Since I am the only one in here, I thought I'd walk down to the front. And turn it around real quick. Beautiful stained glass. And there's the orchestra. Very small church. Very quaint beams and ceiling fans. Wow. Capacity 336. Well, that's going to do it today. And it's funny because when you think of Palm Springs, you think of, well, maybe Frank Sinatra, Sonny Bono, Suzanne Summers, who just passed. But Liberace was here as much as any of them. And this town was definitely his as well and rest in peace Liberace February 4th 1987 amazing entertainer so thankful you know that I was able to come here that I'm able to share it with you so thanks for watching and see you next time